Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the automatic linear modeling function in SPSS. When working with regression, the automatic linear modeling function is a good choice if you want the output to be graphical. The output from this function has several tables and charts that are in full color and for some that may make this function more appealing for presentations. Strictly for the analysis of data, I prefer the linear regression function in SPSS, so it would be analyze regression. You see you have the automatic linear modeling and then the linear. So to, to analyze data and really get to look at the different statistics, I think linear is usually more useful, at least for me. But for graphical output, automatic linear modeling certainly has some advantages. So that's what I'll be taking a look at today. So first, taking a look at these fictitious data, uh, loaded in the data view here in the data editor in SPSS, I have an ID variable here and three predictor variables, a depression inventory, an anxiety inventory, and a substance use inventory. And want to see how these variables predict functioning. So we have one dependent variable or outcome variable named functioning. So if we were to go right into the automatic linear modeling selection here under regression, we'll notice that using predefined roles, there's no target or dependent variable, and all the variables you have in the data set are loaded uh, as predictor variables. So there are a few ways uh, you can handle this. Uh, one is to just leave the predefined roles checked off and simply move functioning into the target and then continue on. It's going to automatically change from predefined to use custom field assignments. Another way is just to move uh, to custom field assignments and then make the changes you would need. Uh, however, in the variable view, there's a way to configure the variables so that the automatic linear modeling function will recognize them and put them where they should be for this regression. So I'm just going to reset this back to default, close out of it, and go to the variable view. So you can see the roles here for all my variables, ID, depression, anxiety, substance use, and functioning, they're all set to input. But we know functioning is the dependent variable, or as SPSS refers to it, the target in regression. So if we change that to target, and we go back to analyze, regression, automatic linear modeling, we can see that functioning is now loaded in as the target, but the ID variable is still in the wrong place. It's listed as a predictor, and really the ID is not part of this analysis. So again, if I go back to the variable view to ID, the role I'd want to select for ID would be none. So you have none for ID, input for the three predictor variables, and then target for the outcome variable. So now if we go back to regression, automatic linear modeling, using the predefined roles, we have the correct target and the correct predictors. Moving from this tab, this is the fields tab, to the build options, we're going to just create a standard model under objectives. Under basics, it's set up by default to automatically prepare data. Uh, I don't really use this feature, so I'm going to uncheck this. I would prefer to check the assumptions of regression beforehand. Uh, for example, outliers, missing values. So I'm going to leave the automatically prepare data feature unchecked. And then in model selection, by default, it's set to forward stepwise. I'm going to change that to include all predictors. And I don't use these other two. So moving to model options, uh, I typically don't use this either, but I want to show it to you. You can save predicted values to the data set or export the model, but we won't do that here. So I'm going to move back to 
fields, just take one last look and make sure it's correct and then click run. You can see the output is much different than the output from the linear regression function. You have a case processing summary and you can see all the cases were included and then you have a model summary and it's all in this box and what you do is double click here and it brings up another view called the model viewer. I'll expand this out a little bit and you can see the first thing you have is the model summary, the target is listed as functioning. Uh, I did not use automatic data preparation so it, it has that indicated as off. The model selection method, I used all the predictors so it's going gonna, it's gonna to indicate none there. And then you can see uh, un under this table it has this graph here uh, labeled accuracy and worse is to the left and better is to the right. And the value of adjusted R square is listed here to the right. And if you move the mouse over the bar here, you can see adjusted R square. So what this is saying is that R predictor variables predict 49.9% of the variance in the dependent variable functioning. Uh, that's what this means. Now they're using the adjusted R square value there's also just an R square value, but the adjusted R square is the one that's reported here. So you can see we have these tiles to the left, and I'm on the top one by default. Move down uh, to automatic data preparation. You can see there's nothing here because I didn't use that feature. Moving down to the next one, you can see it's predictor importance. So it compares the predictor and gives you this graph to show you how the variables are related to each other in terms of importance and for this particular data set uh, with functioning as the dependent variable it has anxiety having the highest predictor importance and then depression and substance use uh, much lower but fairly similar to each other but much lower than anxiety. Clicking on the next tile down you can see we have predicted by observed. So the y-axis is the predicted value and the x-axis is the dependent variable functioning. And what we're looking for here is kind of uh, elliptical shape that could surround these data points and we have that. Moving down to the next uh, box to the left here we have the residuals and the default view is a histogram we can see this more or less looks normally distributed and we can also see this in the form of a, a probability a probability plot and you want these data points to be on or close to the line and for the most part uh, they appear to be. Moving down to the uh, next box under uh, the histogram and the probability, probability plot you can see it has uh, outliers as the name of this table. However, it is important here to look at the actual values of Cook's distance because the table is named outliers, but none of these values are outliers. We're not going to worry about Cook's distance until it gets to about one. And all these values of Cook's distance are quite a distance from one. So none of these records would be considered outliers, none of these values. If we did have a Cook's distance that was one or greater, uh, the convenient part about this table is that it lists the record ID so we could go right to the data set and find it quickly. Moving to the next tile down on the left, we have effects. And you can see we have the contribution of anxiety depression and substance use to functioning. If you mouse over functioning you get the mean standard deviation and the total sample size which was 100 in this case. And you can see that we, we know that from before, I go move up here, that anxiety in this model had the most importance, it was the most important predictor. And if you look at the effects graph here, the thickness of the line indicates the importance. So anxiety has the uh, 
thickest line going into the dependent variable, then depression, and then a similar line thickness for substance use because the depression and substance use, uh, the importance is very close. It's quite similar. One of the features of this graph is this slider down here at the bottom right, display effects with significant values less than. So this lets you reset the alpha uh, by sliding this marker. So if I were to move this down to 0.05, you can see that all three predictor variables are still listed here. 0.01, the same thing. But if I move it down to 0 0.005, you can see now it only displays anxiety and depression. So this sets a different value for alpha. Most of the time, our alpha would be set at 0 0.05. So if I move that back, all three predictive variables would be part of this model. So this is one view that's enabled here in this particular tile, but you can also move down to style and you can see it's set to diagram. You can move to table and you can take a look at this in a table format and a corrective model. If you click here, it'll expand this out and you can see for anxiety and depression and substance use, you have significant values here for all three. The slider option here is available at the bottom of this table as well. So if you were to set this to a more strict alpha, in this case, it would drop substance use from the model at the 0 0.005 level. Moving down to the next tile, uh, this one's similar to the one we just saw, except for you have the intercept included, and you see in this case it's negative, and that's an orange, and the predictor variables are positive, they're in blue. So if we were to move down to style here and change over to table, you can see that we have some different information provided than what we saw for effects. So you see we have sum of squares, degrees of freedom, mean square, the F statistic value, uh, significance and importance. But in the coefficients table, you have the coefficient, the standard error, the T statistic value, significance, the 95% confidence interval, lower and upper values, and then again, importance. To change the size of this table, to change how much information is displayed, instead of the corrected model uh, box, you'll click the coefficient box. So here you can see less information is displayed. Click it again, and you have more information displayed. And of course, you have the same slider here at the bottom. So it's important to remember for these uh, two tiles, coefficients and effects, that you have two different styles that you can display. Moving down to estimated means, you have functioning on the y-axis and the three predictors on the x-axis in separate plots. So you have anxiety, depression, and substance use. And then in the last tile on the left, uh, it has information about the model you ran. You can expand these fields and it gives you details about the statistics that were conducted here. I hope you found this video on using the automatic linear modeling function SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.